Do you all remember this clock? This is the Emil Smeckenbecker Farmer's Daughter's clock that I drove to Columbia about a year ago, something like that. Um, the lady was selling one on Marketplace. My sister lives in Columbia. I asked her to go get it for me. So after leaving my friend's house in the Springfield area, I drove to Columbia. And so uh, Columbia is about a five-hour drive for me from my house. So I spent a lot of uh, hours on the road to go get this clock. And if you remember, I told you that somebody worked on this clock back in 2006. Well, um, they replaced the movement. And I tell people all the time, there are certain clocks that you do not want to replace the movement on. Smeckenbecker has several clock designs that replacing the movement hurts the value of the clock. A Smeckenbecker clock like this can sell up to a thousand dollars. And nowhere on this movement does it say Schmeckenbecker. So it hurts the value. This clock was made in 1968. It's stamped on the door. It's the original door for this clock. Made in 1968. And that was before Regula went to the day code. In 1970, regular went to a day code where they either used a two-digit year or a letter to identify when that movement was made. So in other words, you have to find a movement that A, has Smeckenbecker on it, B, can't have a date code on it. A friend of mine bought some movements for, um, for parts and he just happened to have a Smeckenbecker movement E Smeckenbecker 25 no date code so the uh, purpose behind this video is to finish this clock up I'm gonna take that movement out I'm gonna take that rear plate off I'm gonna put this rear plate on but because this rear plate looks brand new, because they use mothers on it, I'm going to go ahead and shine the rest of the parts up with mothers. And this way, <clears throat> if you look at these clocks today, almost every one that you see was made in 1970 or newer. You're hardly going to find one that was made prior to 1970. This was made in 1968, and with having the uh, an original uh, style movement on it, um, taking it back to uh, original, it will increase the value of this clock even more. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the uh, bellows, um, everything else, and I'm going to take the movement out. Now the right bellow is what controls the farmer's pitchfork. It's what moves his uh, arm up and down because it is connected to this wire right here which moves the farmer's arm up and down and typically with every other cuckoo clock 
B right bellow, which is the high note bellow. The wire that connects to the bellow is typically longer than the left bellow. But in this case, you know, um, the wire is shorter than the low note bellow. And I think it has to do with the, uh, the farmer's pitchfork. This piece right here is what makes the lever go up on the ladder. Now I've got the bird disconnected. I got the screws out. I typically do not bend the uh, wire that connects to this black lever for the music box. It's typically adjusted right where you need it. So uh, you can take this movement out by just slipping that piece off of that wire. So now the movement's out and I can set the case to the side. I don't know what it is. Uh, my my friend Mark is one that gave me this rear plate so I can finish my farmer's daughter's clock. But uh, we talked about it before Christmas. And I don't know what it is uh, about New Yorkers. Um, they're kind of slow about getting things to you. <laughs> Bless his heart. But, uh, and his wife, where she works, there's a post office in her building. But uh, it took him a while to uh, get this thing to me. Um, the actual movement plate that they put in it is a hones movement. And so, um, again, I'm going to take this thing all apart, clean it up, and put this rear plate on. And then it's a Smeckenbecker movement again. And because I'm taking this thing apart to put this on, you want to keep in mind where this bar sits and where this sits. So, as I've told you in the past, pictures is your friend. Um, always take pictures before you start taking things apart. Drawings pictures if you draw like me you'll be thankful that um, they invented a cell phone with a camera on it it all cleaned up and put back together now the only uh, issue that I have now is this um, pendulum leader post does not come off of this one this one is pinged on so I'm going to have to go through my parts section and uh, find one that unscrews. You can see in the rear plate that I put on, there's threads in here. So um, it should be um, a simple fix if I can uh, find one that unscrews. Not all of them unscrewed. I found one 
they had it screwed in. So um, I've already uh, oiled the movement. I just need a pendulum leader wire, which I got plenty. Um, the uh, function test worked out great. And when you do a function test, I talked about this before. This is a rack stop lever. When it falls into the rack notches, it needs to fall into one of these notches all the way. Whether it's the 1 o'clock or the 12 o'clock or any number in between. If it doesn't fall into the number, into the notch all the way, your clock will strike one too many times, more than likely, especially after you get above, let's say, 10. And uh, the cause of that is somebody turned their hands backwards and... Uh, This foot right here needs to be adjusted so the tab coming off the rack stop lever goes into the notch, appropriate notch, all the way. If your clock is striking 13 times at 12 o'clock, it's because... This tab is, or this arm right here, could be squeezed together too much. Um, I would start with this tab, adjusting it up or down. First of all, at 12 o'clock, let me get to it. You could see somebody prior to me put a a mark where the 12 o'clock position is. So at the 12 o'clock position, this should go all the way into that notch. If it's going into the 13 or the 14, try adjusting this foot some to make it go into the 12 o'clock notch. If not, you might have to uh, spread the arm that comes off the uh, rack. This arm right here, you might have to open it up some. So it, it, if it's closed too much, that would cause this foot to be closer to here that would cause this rack to drop up in this area I want to point out it, when you're doing your function test and it doesn't stop exactly where it should with this type of clock, this arm right here is laying down too much. That arm has got to do with the, um, the lift lock lever. It's not functioning. It worked fine until I put this arm and this arm on. And now I'm not happy with the function test. So, um, 
and I use a lot of force when I'm doing my function test. At 275 gram, 320 gram weight, it's not going to be the kind of force that I'm using. So if it passes my function test, it will pass a 320 gram weight function test. It's, to me, it's uh, bouncing a little bit. That could be a couple of things. These arms might not be in the right position. Or it could be this tab right here that hits that cuckoo shutoff lever. It's not adjusted properly either. So I'm going to work on uh, adjusting that. So uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, I've been up for almost all night. I will get back to this movement later on. But um, it's been in my position um, for a year now, or close to it. And uh, my friend was supposed to send me this rear plate long before Christmas last year. But I finally got it. People in New York are a little bit slow. Hint, hint, grasshopper. But now that I got, that I finished working on my grandfather clock, I, I can't work on it any further because it's too dang hot and my other portion of my house. I can uh, now start working on other clocks, such as this uh, Smeckenbecker clock. Um, I show this in other videos. On my particular clock, your clock might be a little bit different. But there's a wire that comes out right here, and it's curved like a C, and it goes into the bottom half of the lever. And you don't want the staples that wrap around the ladder tight. That way he can climb up and down it. And on my particular clock, I have the chain wrapped a little bit different than you might have on your clock um it goes around the uh, um the music box and then um the front side of the music box comes down this wheel and whenever it goes over the wheel i then have the chain going to the rear hole and the back side of the music box comes down the wheel and after it passes through the wheel it comes to the front hole this part right here is what makes the lever go up and down when I press on that part right there you could see the lever going up and down when you trip the music let's see if I could do this on camera There's this um, pedal right here that pushes down on this wire. You have to make sure that the screw is tight to push down on that wire.
and in this case my screw is a little bit loose and I need to tighten it up. Because it's uh it's too loose. It's uh well, I see it's loose. I think I have to uh, adjust that wire some. I need to bend that wire down some because it's putting too much pressure on it. Uh, hopefully these wire benders will work. That one's too small. hold the wire and then manually push it down let's see if that works something is slipping Stand by, let me figure it out. I guess I wasn't holding my lip right. As you can see, now that wheel pushes that lever down, which in turn will cause the lever to climb up the ladder. If I can do this on camera. So, um, I'm waiting for some parts to dry. I don't want to go too much further. Uh, so, uh, we'll come back after those parts are dry. Um, the reason why I have the chain cross, crossed is because this rubber wheel gets worn out. You can uh, add an O-ring to it if you uh, if you can't uh, figure out any other way to do it. Um, you can put a couple O-rings to uh, build that rubber wheel up. Um, but in this case, I just cross the chains and it works. This part here is what makes the pitchfork. You should be able to see the pitchfork go up and down and it's connected to the high note bellow the uh, rocks on top they're styrofoam um, and a lot of these pieces that came off and I had to put them back on and um, anyway um, it's uh, it's getting there there's a nail here that holds that ladder I'm gonna pull that nail out some and bend it toward the ladder maybe I think I'm gonna leave it alone speaking of the pitchfork a lot of times the pitchfork is gone and there's a guy that subscribed to my youtube channel he made one out of wire and JB welding. It would be easy to do to um, 
take a piece of wire and uh, and then take another piece of wire make a U out of it and then um, he JB welded the wire um, he's supposed to be sending me a picture of it but so far I haven't got that picture I might add a, a clip I, I um I took some um you could take this and soak it in water and after it's completely wet you're gonna have to find a way to gradually bend this um, I made a video where I took one of these things, which is uh, a, a longer, it's a skewer is what it is, where I, because it's flexible, I soaked it in water and I gradually bent it into a U and then all you would have to do is drill a hole in it and add this to be part of the pitchfork. But this is uh, a little bit bigger than the pitchfork. So uh, you would have to sand all this down. Um, people with a 3D printer might be able to 3D print. But Smeckenbecker made clocks from 1948 to the mid-90s. Uh, they're some of the most sought after clocks, certain clocks. The Farmer's Daughter's Cuckoo Clock. They do make a Farmer's Daughter eight day cuckoo clock. This is a one day cuckoo clock. They, I've seen a, an eight day cuckoo clock. However, it was on eBay a couple years ago and eBay doesn't save. I wish I would have taken and saved a picture of it. Um, but I didn't, but Smeckenbecker makes some of the most sought after cuckoo clocks. They're really smart and, uh, their clocks are really cool, animated. And so, um, anyway, um, I've seen these clocks go for well over $500. Uh, one just recently sold on, um, a Goodwill site. Uh, and it sold for over $200. It was made in the 60s. Um, this clock, I know for a fact, was made in 1968. Here's the door. It stamped 668. For, for a movement that was made in 1960s, it can't have a date code. So that's why I've been waiting for this uh, clock to finish the uh, the repair um, because I was waiting for my friend to send me this rear plate. Um, the people that originally had this clock, I already showed it to you, they replaced the movement, which in my personal opinion, hurt the value of the clock because it no longer said Smeckenbecker on it. And so um, you don't you don't want to do that with certain clocks. You don't want to replace the movements. You want to fix them. When working on clocks it's best to save bubble wrap uh, from clocks that you got in. That way you can sit the clock down on the bubble wrap and it'll protect the face. Especially when there's a clock like this Meckenbecker that has a lot going on in front of it. These fences, they're not secured that well. You know, the, uh, the lever, just everything about this clock, uh, it could get damaged. And so I like using bubble wrap. It's not guaranteed that something won't break but it helps protect it now I know the music works I know the movement works because I tested it 
So now it's time to put the uh, movement back into the clock after I put the chains on the movement and, uh, and then um, um, get the bellows connected and then test it out to, uh, to get this black lever. This black lever here is what attaches to the music box to that spring right there that's hanging down. This spring right here, well, sorry, this wire right here. And then um, this lever right here is what stops the governor fan um, while the music, sorry, while the cuckoo is playing, um, the way the music doesn't play. And so you have to get all that stuff adjusted once you um, put it into the case. Now, this particular clock, it doesn't have it, but you can see this hole. This is, uh, if you wanted to, you could drill a hole in the bottom of the case, attach a wire or a string to this. This is the lift lock lever, which starts everything in motion. This lift lock lever is what lifts the rack stop lever. Uh, so if your clock is uh, off on the cuckoo sequence, you can pull that wire to uh, trip this to uh, get it caught up. But anyway, I'm going to put the chains on. And then I put the movement in the clock. According to the Time Savers catalog, a one day regular 25 one day movement can either be 70 inch chain or 78 inch chain. As you can see, 90 millimeters is a wire diameter, 61 is a length per foot, and then uh, the length. Now, I have uh, the, the chains that came with the clock. I've got a mark that goes from here to here is three feet. Um, one chain is longer than the other chain. So I'm going to uh, divide the chain up uh, to make them uh, all the... 70 inches long I have other videos on chains at the very least what you want to do is rub the chain through your hand feeling for any deformities um, to include glue uh, links that are not connected properly, etc. You should look through the chain um, to make sure that there's nothing obstructing the holes. To include glue, because you will find some chains with glue on them. And in this case, there's a bunch of rust on this chain, so I need to clean it off and I've got a video on how to clean chains. Where you take a scrubby pad. And I could feel that rust. It feels different from the rest of the chain. And so um, that's how I spotted it as I was doing this video. I felt something there too. Just this link here. It's got some glue on it. So I need to clean that off also. So like I said, at the very least, run your hand slowly through the chains. Um paying attention to anything that feels different from the rest of the chain.
and after you inspect the chain again you want to uh, run your uh, sorry after you clean the chain you want to run your hands back over it to make sure and to look at it to make sure like if you use one of these uh, um, scratchy pads you want to make sure that this stuff isn't all over your chain so I got the chains on and I got the movement sitting in the case but I have to hook up the music wire and because my hands are so big I don't have the uh, the, the movement all the way on um, I'm going to uh, put the wire into that hole of that black lever I'm grabbing some hemostats so I can grab a hold of that wire So I'm, I'm going to put the wire into the black hole because that wire is already bent the way it needs to be or pretty close to it. And then uh, after I put that wire through that hole of that black lever, the clock's slipping on me. I will bend it the rest of the way over so it doesn't come off. Sort of like so. Now I can finish putting the clock movement into the case. And using this tool here that's got a magnet on the end of it connect a screw to the to the bit and carefully put the screw in the hole already got one screw in and go ahead and screw it in there I got my screws off to the side here that way I don't have to be looking for them and, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be careful with this movement, with this clock. I should say there's, there's a lot of uh, issues in the front of it that can go wrong. And that's why I have this bubble wrap. But like I said, it's not a guarantee that I won't break something. The, uh, the very last L-shaped post that the screw goes in it's not sitting where it needs to be so I have to move it and you can easily move them and if you can't you can uh, loosen up the, the nut that holds the uh, plates together and then you can move it. Screws are in. Now I need to connect the bird to the door. And again, that's where these hemostat pliers come in handy. You grab a hold of the wire so uh, it doesn't fall back into the case while you're connecting things. The wire just broke on me. Hopefully I have enough wire left over that I can connect it and you know that happens you know you open up these things you, you take them apart you put them back together things break you have to be prepared for stuff like that and I have wires that connect this stuff 
the door opens good enough for me. And it closes. That's what I want to see. And so now I have to connect the bellows. And um, I also need to put the dial on this clock. First of all, to connect the uh, wire to the uh, lift arms, it's easier to connect it to the bellow purse than taking a small screwdriver and open up the loop that is on the, uh, the lift arm itself, like I did here. It's easier to do it that way than just crimp it closed afterwards. But, um, the, um, there's typically a jumper wire that goes from the, um, from this wire right here that controls the, uh, the farmer's pitchfork, but that wire is missing, and that jumper wire connects from here to here, but that wire is missing, so I'm going to have to make one. So uh, you have to determine where you want that wire to be, where the uh, where you want the pitchfork to start off, and how much you want it to raise. So uh, I'm going to take the bellow out to do to make that wire because it a it'd be simpler with the bellow out of my way. Like I said, I want a wire that goes from here to here, from the pitchfork guy to the uh, high note lift lever. And it doesn't really matter. I'm here. I have a paper clip I'm gonna use, and so um, I'm just estimating at what I want to do. Whatever works, right? That's the main thing and uh, concerned is whatever works. I think that is enough wire. And hopefully I don't break anything on camera. My wire is not being cooperative because it got caught in a chain. And you know what? I have plenty of paper clips, so if I screw up, I'll make another one.
I think this wire might be too short. Maybe not. Let's see what it looks like. His pitchfork is in the middle. And when I lift up the uh, bellow arm, it moves. How would you be running toward somebody? You wouldn't be running with a pitchfork down. You'd be running with a pitchfork toward that person. So I think uh, I'm okay with that. As long as when I connect the bellow, it works. I'll be even better with it. So I still have to crimp the uh, high note wire down uh, where I opened up that loop and now it's crimped down and now it's time to test it. If I could test it uh, on camera here. Pitchfork moves, I'm happy. That's all that matters, right? If I'm happy. I have a lot of clock parts, especially cuckoo clocks, since uh, I went crazy for cuckoo clocks here a while back. What I don't have is a little bitty tiny nails that go into the dial. Yeah, I could make some, but I don't feel like it. So I took some Aliens glue and dot, uh, glued the dial on. You typically don't take the dial off. And uh, the hands were extremely dirty. So I was washing the hands at my sink. And I didn't put the stopper in the sink. And the hour hand went blind. I think it went down the sink. But no big deal. I got other hands. There should be a washer, which there is, that goes on after the minute hand. Before you put the nut on. It's almost time to test this thing out. Now I had it on my test stand and the music keeps playing. And I'm going to show you why. This black lever here is too far over to the right, which is pulling the... Um, let me show you again, because I don't think you've seen it. This black lever is too far to the right, which is pulling the, uh, the brass lever that um, starts the music. So I need to uh, manipulate it 
so it goes to the left more. And when I say manipulate it, there's a screw down here that you loosen to maneuver that lever. Well, that screw is over there, and I don't want to mess with that screw, so all I'm going to do is pull this black lever to the left, and now the music is is able to shut off. I might have pulled it to the left too much, but uh, my most watched video is working on a music box, and I combined it. It was like four or five videos, and I combined it into one video. And uh, I, I, I say there's also a um, there's a notch on the wheel that the chain goes on and there's a wire that comes off this lady and when the music is done that wire goes into that notch which brings her back inside the door so if she's not coming back inside the door when the music is done it's because that wire is not going in that notch and sorry you can't see what's going on. It's extremely dark. The music is still playing. And so, uh, that brass lever that goes into the music box, it might need to be bent down a little bit so the lever goes in the hole. So I'm going to do that off camera. I don't think the wire that connects from this black lever to the music box is long enough because that's the all the further that the uh, low note lift lever will move and I should be able to uh, push this low note lift lever and it allows the clock to cuckoo but it's it's not and so I have to uh, um, take the movement back out make a longer wire for that uh, for that piece that uh, trips the music box fun 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 and here's one that's on this site it's currently at selling at $83 <coughs> but um, it won't stay there I just wanted to show you some some that already sold here's one that sold for $72 it's missing the weights in the pendulum, I believe. Look at this Schmeckenbecker blacksmith clock sold for two thirty two plus shipping. Here's one that sold for hundred dollars plus shipping, missing the weights. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me get to where another one sold for seventy seven dollars, missing pendulum and weights. Let get to the one that I'm trying to find you. This one right here sold for $296 plus shipping. But I want to show you something. <coughs> There's a movement you can't really see. You see this? This right here says five. That right there says it's a, a one day movement. And there should be a date code after that five, but there's not. That means that this clock here was made in the 1960s prior to them starting the date code. And so just like mine um, was made in 1968, 668. Um, unfortunately, the door doesn't show the uh, stamp on it. If they have a picture of the door. Sorry, they don't have a picture of the door. So a $325 clock on Goodwill, but... When you buy clocks from Goodwill, you're not guaranteed that they're going to show up. You're not guaranteed that they're going to work. And so, uh, but that's a really nice clock. The other ones were missing stuff. And uh, so this one sold for over $300. So now we're on eBay. Sold items. 
you have to go to sold listings to get a current market value. You cannot go to current listings because somebody could ask a million dollars for something. Doesn't mean they're going to get it. I want Smeckenbecker cuckoo clocks that are currently sold. Here's a Hoppenbrosch cuckoo clock that sold for seven hundred dollars plus shipping. Seven hundred forty-one, seven hundred forty-two dollars. But it looks like it's in the original box. Looks brand new. The uh, spinning wheel clock they typically sell for about three hundred fifty dollars. So far, no farmer's daughter cuckoo clock. There's one that sold for eighty dollars, but it's missing weights, pendulum, part of the fence, the lever, missing a lot of stuff. So, well, I take that back. Sold for a hundred bucks to include the shipping. There's one that sold for one hundred eighty dollars. Um, I don't see the weights or the pendulum. Another one of those spinning wheel clocks, 350 bucks. There's a farmer's daughter clock, but it's got a lot of missing stuff. So for 100 bucks, you might as well say, missing the lever, the weights, the fence, the pendulum, missing a lot of stuff. And the spinning wheel clock that sold for around $275. Came from England. Another farmer's daughter clock, missing the lever, the weights, the pendulum, the fencing. So for about a hundred bucks. They're not cheap clocks is what I'm getting at. And if you could find a decent one, you're looking at 150. There's one on Marketplace. I don't know. I don't believe they ship. This one was from 1970. And best offer was accepted. So it sold for around 200 bucks. Looks in really good condition. But uh, anyway, there's one on Marketplace. It's been listed on Marketplace for a while. They started off at like 200 bucks. And I think they're down to 150 now. But... Again, this has got a lot of parts missing. The price sold for 75 bucks. If you're patient enough, you will find them cheap enough. If you're, here's one of those uh, spinning wheel clocks that sold for around $400. But if you're patient enough, you will find what you're looking for. But you have to be patient. You might have to be willing to uh, work on them. I paid $30 for my Smeck and Becker Farmer's Daughter's Cuckoo Clock. That is a dang good price. It has all the parts. I just got to repair everything. I didn't like the way the pitchfork was interfering with me setting the hands on the dial. So I made the wire that connects to the uh, bellow uh, lift wire longer. So uh, this wire here... Sorry, I need to get something to point with. This wire here that's connected to the pitchfork, this wire here is what I made longer. That way this wire here is pointed down, which makes the pitchfork point down. So even when the, uh, the cuckoo bellow is lifted, get it that way even when the cuckoo bellow is lifted when the wire is connected of course it's going to lift up that uh, pitchfork and uh, and it will be uh, better off I don't want to take the movement all the way out so I'm going to disconnect the bellows and try to get to that wire um, that trips the uh, music, uh, sorry, cuckoo, because currently uh, I might be able to bend the uh, the low note lift wire down, because currently the uh, low note lift wire is raising the bellow too much. And it still didn't do what I wanted it to do. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to take the movement out. 
because this is not allowing the uh, the low note lift lever to drop that much. I think it adding a longer wire, like I said, to start with that goes from the music box to that black lever will do the trick. So stand by. My tray that I keep the parts in went off my desk. I get involved in a lot of things. I, I get involved in video chatting with people. I get involved in making uh, 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 videos for answering people's questions. And so um, I accidentally bumped my tray, moving all this stuff off my desk so I can um, make a different video. A uh, person was asking questions about super glue and baking soda. And even though I've got several videos already pertaining to the super glue and baking soda, I made a special video on super glue and baking soda. You'll have to look at it. It's where I break some plastic spoons. But anyway, uh, long story short, I my parts went blind. I can't find some of the parts. So I had to make another wire that connects from the um, the uh, guy with the pitchfork to the uh, high note lift bellow and I'm testing it out to see if I can live with it it does move I can live with that so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the bellow in. And when my parts went blind, my bellow lift wire went blind also. So I'm going to have to uh, come up with another bellow lift wire. Um, but I've got plenty. If you're having trouble where your cuckoo isn't shutting off with one of these musical cuckoo clocks where the music box is up in that top of the roof, it's got to do with this wire, more than likely. If this wire is positioned too far to the right, it doesn't allow the rack stop lever to um, to go over far enough to catch the rack. This being the rack stop lever right here, so you have to um, you have to um, bend it so it goes to the left. Also, if after it cuckoos, the music doesn't play. It's because the governor fan is being stopped by this wire. So you have to bend it more. And hopefully you can see this notch right here. Let me get a wooden stick. I find that wooden sticks you can see better in the videos. This arm right here on the brass assembly for the music box has got a curve. That arm is curved. It points toward the governor fan. Well, that wire rests right in the curb of that music box. So you have to bend it. And I'm going to do this with my fingers. Try to. To where it's in the curb. And I have trouble bending it with my fingers. So I'm going to try one of these wire benders. I don't really like these things, but... There's not enough room. Come on, Mark. Maybe that misses the governor fan. The lady comes back inside. The music's no longer playing. I've accomplished that objective time for me to take a break and while your clock is in a test phase use a simple wire like this or a paper clip this this is easy to make you hook one end to the chain you hook the weight to the other end you know because the links you can only open them and close them so many times and they're gonna break and if you put the the regular hooks and the regular um, washers on and you have to take the clock all back apart 
you're going to get frustrated, especially if you wound it all the way up. So use these. I got cocky. I put the, the regular clips and links on. And I had to take it all back apart. This is what I'm talking about uh, with the r regular hooks and washers. So uh, while it's in the test phase, come up with something like this. I used to use paper clips, uh, uh, but my friend Ron Rosencran uses. He actually has weights at, uh, that are permanently attached to uh, his wires, but he has plenty of weights and uh, anyway use something like this now we're still in the test phase hopefully my camera don't fall off of what I got like I said you got these uh, hooks that you add to the chain that way in case you have to take the movement back apart but uh the half hour The music is playing a little bit. I need to uh, adjust the music a little bit. I believe it's because the way I have the chain. Nope. I just, something I gotta figure out. And it's got the right weight on it, 320 grams. It might be because the way I had the chain wrapped around. Remember I told you that the, uh, the wheel is worn out, so I had the chain wrapped coming from the front, going to the back hole, coming from the back, going to the front hole. So uh, we are getting there. I still got to put the dial on. That's, I'm going to have to adjust the music box a little bit. Um, Like I said, that wire's not stopping the governor fan like it's supposed to. The wheel is uh, catching that wire to make the uh, lever climb the ladder. I'll turn this around here in a second so you can see. <clears throat> but the, uh, that pedal, that brass lever, I don't know, a backwards S. It's catching that wire that has weight on it. And that's why it makes the ladder, the lever, go up and down the ladder. So let me turn the clock around so you can see what it's looking like from the front. Here I have it turned around. My my floor, where I'm at, it needs fixed. Cookie door opens. The guy is moving the pitchfork. The lady's coming out because the music is playing when it shouldn't be. The lever's going up the ladder. He's not dropping like he should be. And do that again. But he is working, and he's climbing up the ladder. I'm going to call this video good, because uh, other than the minor things that I have to do to it, the clock is working. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Again, I only paid $30 for this clock. It had a lot of damage, and I think I did a good job of uh, fixing most of it i still got to come up with a block of wood right here it's no big deal it's a square piece of wood i just got to find a square piece of wood to glue right here but uh for 30 bucks i think i did good please leave me comments please tell me what y'all think about this and uh, may god bless each and every one of you 
The next clock I'm hoping to get to is either this Meckenbecker Hoppenbrost clock that I paid less than $60 to include shipping off of eBay, or I've got way too many clocks. This uh, antique black forest clock is one of the clocks that my friend gave me for my birthday. And this is the topper that goes with it. So uh, I haven't decided yet. And uh, I have to leave for a couple days. I'm going to go see my friend, help him out with some clocks. Uh, and, take some movements apart. He's got a friend, Robert, that's going to come over. Robert's interested in working on cuckoo clocks, but neither one of them have taken that many cuckoo clock movements apart. So I'm going to do a little local training while I'm there. And one final thought, Sir Lucky, I'm catching up with you.